Hey everyone! Welcome back! I am back today with more Ruby and something a little bit different for you guys today. Today we're going to be checking out the Ruby Volume 1 soundtrack. Guys, I'm very excited to just really go in depth and listen to these songs. I know the music is very important to the show and uh, I'm looking forward to just kind of immersing myself in it. Um, that being said, I have never done a soundtrack reaction before so this is all new to me. Um, I'm just going to really focus and um, listen. I actually have earbuds today, which I never do earbuds um, because I just don't like things in my ears. But um, but I, I'm doing them today because I really want to make sure that I'm getting the full effect of all of the sound, seeing as how that's like the most important thing about this. Um, and I also believe that the... Um, the videos have lyrics, like their lyric music videos. So that will help. So if I pause to say something, um, you know, I won't be necessarily missing anything because I'll know the lyrics by what's coming up on the screen. But that being said, like I'll try to just um, not be talking over, <laughs> constantly talking over anything important. Um, so uh, going into this, I know kind of a handful of things about the soundtrack. I know that the um, composer for a lot of their, I don't know if he's a composer for like the score, but maybe he is. I know that um, he did a lot of music for the show and it's his like young teenage daughter that sings a lot of the songs, which just blew my mind because her voice is so gorgeous and um, sounds much more mature than I think somebody said she was like 14 when the, when the first volume came out. I'm like, wow, it just... It, uh, it sounds very trained, very mature. Um, but uh, I don't know a whole lot else about the soundtrack other than that it's very important and the lyrics tell you a lot about the different characters and are um, pretty integral to the show. So when you guys mention a soundtrack reaction, I'm like, that actually, that sounds like something I should do and I should check out. Um, I love music so it's gonna be a real treat for me just to like sit here and get to <laughs> kind of do like a little album review um so I'm going to be um, using a YouTube playlist. One of my awesome patrons sent me this YouTube playlist. Thank you so much. I will be putting, um, I'll try to remember to put the link. If I don't it, put it in the description, I will put it like in a comment or something, but I'm, um, I'll, I'll provide the, uh, the info for that, the link so that you guys can go and check out their playlist. Um, so I have everything in, in one nice little place. Um, and I'm just gonna let it play through and just immerse myself. So, all right guys, what do you say we go ahead and get started? It's earbud time. I should have put them in before the video started. That probably would have been a good idea. Make sure I got the right ones, left and right. Oh, this is gonna be different. I never do, I've never done, I know some people do earbuds for reactions all the time, but that's just not something I do. Maybe I will after this, I don't know. Maybe I'll love it. Maybe I'll never go back. All right. So, initially I feel like this is mostly about Ruby, but I can see a lot of things about the other girls, too. Based on a lot of fairy tale characters, I'm told. Mm. Uh-oh, I hope that's not a foreshadowing. I 
A lot of like positive themes in this, but a lot of like the world will never be the same or like all will be lost. I'm like, oh no, I hope that's not a foreshadowing. Um, I feel like it's mostly about Ruby, but I feel like just in general it's kind of about um, some of the things that might happen in the future, like some of the things that are kind of culminating together in the world during this season. That's cool. Oh, okay, that is really cool. Whatever. That's cool. Mmm. I have a lot I want to talk about. Mm. That lyric I want to talk about. Okay, so before this goes on to the next one. Okay, so really quick, let's just talk about some of the lyrics that we that we saw there. Um, a lot of really positive stuff like this is a time for new solutions and um, victories in a simple soul, you know, like sounds like a very kind of classic, um, you know, a, a young, pure heart will will kind of change the world. But on the other hand, we have like <laughs> some like um, hope and peace are lost forever. And and um, I maybe worse, maybe uh the song is meant to be from different perspectives, perhaps, or maybe um, the lyrics that are a little bit darker are about some of the the darkness that we know is kind of coming in this world. Um, but the parts that feel to me like they're about Ruby um, talking about new solutions and things like that are, are the answer to that. Um, I do feel like it's mostly about Ruby, like, this will be the day I've waited for is kind of like, I feel like it's all about her, um, and her goals and dreams and everything, um, kind of coming to fruition, um, in this season slash volume where she gets to begin this kind of new life and this new road to, um, being a huntress, which is her dream, so, um, I noticed there was like a reference to lightning and I, I've been told that, um, I think it's, uh, was it Nora who's supposed to be like, uh, like, you know, they're all inspired by different, um, mythological characters or fairy tale characters. And they actually mention like fairy tales in there. I'm like, oh, that's very appropriate. Um, I think it's Nora who's supposed to be Thor, like she was inspired by Thor. And uh, I like, so I like that little reference to the lightning, but there's a lot of references to the, in the show to like the elements. Um, I noticed that a lot. Um, there's a, a real theme about nature and its power. Not sure where they're going with it, but it's just something I kind of, I kind of see developing. So, all right. So that was great. That's obviously the the opening theme. I don't know if it'll be the opening theme for volume two, volume two, if it's like the theme for all of them. Um, but it is at least our theme for volume one and I love it. So let's move on to what is next. Oh, it's, it's an ad. <gasps> From the trailer. In the first trailer. Does this one have lyrics? I hope it does. about the different girls. Mm. 
That makes sense now. One girl gang. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful music. I love how each lyric kind of covers a different girl and kind of their um, story or struggle in the series. Um, the only one I feel like we haven't really gotten into a lot yet is Yang, but she's beautiful, so that lyric made sense. Um, but the ones about like white being cold and burdened by a royal task. I get that now. I get the the beast reference and and uh, the lyric about um, black because we, now we know that um, Blake is a cat fauna. Beautiful art here. I like how. It starts out very soft and we go into like battle music with it. Mmm, a little horror vibe here. Ooh, the ending for that was very ominous. Oh, it's not over. Okay. Thought that was the ending, but now it's feels like an action vibe. Nice. All right, is that the ending? That appears to be the ending. So before we start on the next one, um, I'll just say um, Red Like Roses makes so much more sense now. Also that we know um, whenever the, the creatures of Grimm, whenever the monsters are like killed, Instead of blood spurting out, these like rose petals spurt out. I don't know if there's a significance to that or if it's just the way that they work, but it is pretty cool to um, to kind of, I felt like it was kind of maybe referenced in that first lyric about brings me to the place you rest. Um, maybe I'm misinterpreting that, but you could kind of see it as um, the rose petals, like when they die, place of rest. Um, but I love how it starts out very slow and haunting and goes into action. And then it goes into like a kind of almost like a horror inspired kind of like a very creepy sound. And then we're kind of back to the action. So I'm, I think I'm reading too much into like, what do all these mean for like the series? And like, are we going to go to a really dark place on the series? And um, it could just be... Um, it could just be a coincidence, but it's it's fun to suppose sometimes. So that, I think, was very obviously Ruby's song. Um, I love how it had a little bit about each girl, though. So now we're doing Mirror Mirror, which I think is, I think it's from the white trailer. I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out. So let's go. She has this like air of sadness about her.
A lot of themes about like her coldness, you know. Piano though, my god. So I had heard all these in the trailers, but it makes so much more sense now to go back and really get into the lyrics and there's a lot of themes about Weiss being so cold and like that lyric about can a heart be turned to stone. Oh. Interesting. Oh, that's powerful. Can't can't hide from it when you take a good look at yourself. Very powerful. But not now that she has a team, right? Maybe that's going to change. Okay. I really want to talk about that before we move on. Let's just, actually, let's get through the ad for the next one. So we can just jump right in. Okay. Um, so again, I had heard all of these in the trailers, but with no context. Um... I, I find it much, much, much more rewarding now. I'm so glad I waited to like the end of the volume to go in and um, and listen to all of these because um, I think it's I think it's safe to say like Weiss is very she's been living her life very kind of separated, um, and at first it looks like she's she's separated from the world because of her wealth and her power and everything, but it's really more than that. Like, once we found out about what's been going on with her family and the White Fang, we see there's a, a little bit more of a dangerous element associated with that. There's, um, you know, she said her family had gone through, like, actual bloodshed. And so, of course, you would kind of start to withdraw um, if you... Uh, had those kinds of fears and everything. Um, not to mention just, you know, being an heiress, I'm sure is pretty, I'm sure it can be a little isolating in and of itself. But um, considering like what her family um, has gone through and everything, um, I'm sure that only makes it worse. So that one lyric about, um, oh, it was just beautiful about, I can hide it from everyone else, but why can't you hide it from me? And it's so true, like, you can put on a brave front, you can, you can, uh, you can fake it around other people, but when you take a good hard look at yourself, it's impossible to get away from, like, who you really are. And, um, it's funny because towards the end of the season, the volume, I'm seeing Weiss less and less as, like, cold. Um... I feel like maybe a lot of this is how she felt at the beginning of the volume and, you know, having a team, getting to know an individual faunus person, um, having to work with them and everything, I feel like is changing a lot of this. At least I hope it is. I hope she's not feeling as lonely. Um, but really just beautiful, powerful lyrics. So, all right. So now we're going to move on to From Shadows. Is this about Blake? Beautiful art. I remember this one being a little bit more like 
had kind of like a techno sort of beat. Oh yeah, there it is. Getting the bass in there, I like it. Feels like we're in a heist, you know? And this is from her trailer, I believe, so. Makes sense because we saw them. We saw them like uh, robbing a train of dust. Oh, makes so much more sense. Oh, very literal meaning now that I know the story behind this. Oh, he's so there's a male voice in here too, and the trailer was her with a male character. That makes sense. Right? It was all about just taking back what belonged to them. Mm, very sad but interesting themes about. Um, just the discrimination and everything that the f all the faunas have have faced and what Blake went through being part of White Fang just wanting to just wanting like basic rights and not mm. Yeah, but just, uh, what do you do when you're just... Oh. So sad to think that... Oh, the guitar wailing, though. I love it. How else are you supposed to feel when you're just born into subjugation, like the song says, you know? Like, of course you would feel like you wanted to um, take back what was stolen for you, from you, and you can see how it would go further than that, like, you know, wanting to punish, you know? It's not like they haven't been through hell. That was that made so much more sense. Oh? Oh, oh. Oh, there's more. I love that. After all the Lyrics and screaming and fast beat. What's left is it's kind of like very soft, sad piano score. That says something. All right, I'm gonna let this next ad play and then we're gonna talk about that because that one made a whole lot more sense. All right, so. 
in context, that one is very, very literal. Like we will come back, you know, from shadows, we'll come back and take him what a uh, take back what you stole. Um, and just talking all about being born into this role of someone who's just despised and hated and, and, um, treated with disgust for no reason, just other than who you are, <laughs> you know? Um, it's a, it's a powerful message. And I enjoyed learning about Blake's story because, um, you can see how that would very easily turn from, okay, we're, we're going to take back the rights that are ours to, especially considering like how, like what it was probably met with. I'm sure it was met with like, and I think they even referenced this on the show that like, it was just met with such, you know, it's hard to do like, uh, um, anything in peace when it's met with, um, just more discrimination and violence. So sadly, you can see the evolution of the White Fang and how it just kind of turned into a, a more violent organization um, as opposed to one, you know, trying to take back the rights for um, Faunus people. Um, but I think it was really powerful to hear that, you know, in the song, a lot of, um, although I will say a lot of the female vocals, a lot of the female lyrics, um, were more about, um, I, I think they were pretty similar, but I feel like at one point I almost felt like, okay, she's kind of singing about, let's just take back what was stolen from us. And he's kind of sounds angrier, like he's out for blood. Um, but at one point, like, they were both kind of singing about that, like, let's just, you know, like, kind of make them pay, you know? But, um, at the end, after all the, like, very, and the vocals were just so well done, like, that kind of screaming punk kind of sound, and at the end, all that's left is just kind of like the sad piano to play it out. Um, so that was very well done. That one was, like, incredibly literal. Um considering what we know about Blake now. So, um, all right. I think we're done with the... No, we're not done with the trailer ones because we still have um, the yellow trailer. So I don't know if that's what this one is, but we'll find out when we play it. So let's go. Oh, yeah, I think this is probably it. They sang it together. Oh, no, maybe it's just her singing. Is this Yang? Ooh, you're gonna get burnt. Mmm. Yes. Get it, girl. I like it. Wow. The heat of a fever. A lot of themes about heat and flame in this. Oh, I love it. Just like, just such a great, just like power, girl power song. Oh! I love the reference. I, it's just just like I love it. It is pure power. Just like get out of my way. You're going down. It doesn't. Hmm. Fuck with me, Johnny Blaze, suspect me. Fast, melt them bitches down. 
Oh, guys, I was not prepared. I was not prepared. This is my favorite so far. Is this, I'm guessing with from the yellow text, this is about Yang. I don't know if I'm correct in that, but I love this. I love it. It's just pure power. There was that little part about like, just, you can just quit this now and just know that I'm just going to get what I want. So there was a little bit of mercy in there, but for the most part, it was just get the flip out of my way. Oh, guys, I think that was my favorite. Oh, Hank, before we, uh, before we move on. Um... I was not expecting explicit lyrics in this, guys. But I have to say, it worked very well for that one. Um, <laughs> the Super Saiyan reference. Oh my god. Guys, I, th I think that was my favorite one yet. They're all so good. It's hard to choose because they're all so powerful in their own way. But good lord, that one was just like... That's the one you just like crank up when you just gotta like, you know, you're working out or you're just, you just create, you're like, I got this. Mm, just bring the fire, bring the, bring the power. I burn. Oh guys, I love that one. But I was not ready for the rap interlude. I was not prepared. That was really good. I think that was supposed to be about Yang. And I gotta say like Yang is the only one who hasn't yet had um, like a, this is my struggler, this is my burden kind of thing. Um, she's just kind of like, she's just there kicking butt and, and being cool. And <laughs> I just love her. I don't know. I'm sure we'll get more. We'll get more about her as time goes on, but all right. Very impressed. Let's move on. Okay. So just kind of about the team dynamic. We know the moon is broken. So that's an interesting lyric. I love this one. So this is about the friendship dynamic. Rose reference. Gold slash fire reference also in this song. Maybe a little Yang reference. I absolutely love the fun, happy disco sound. I love also the graphics here. So I think this is about like the, their team dynamic and also just the friendships that they've developed. Oh, so 
such a fun, happy, positive one. This might be my favorite. And I love the style of it, too. Almost a little bit about the sister dynamic, perhaps? I love it. I can see some references to the friendship dynamic, the team dynamic, the sister dynamic, and some of the just like cute, happy, love, crush sounding lyrics. Almost kind of remind me a little bit of Nora and Ren. Emma, uh, maybe I'm reading that wrong, but I could see that in there. Okay, now it's some of my lyrics are blocked, but that's okay. We're, I think we're at the end. Are we at the end of the... We can't be at the end of the whole soundtrack now, are we? I don't think we are. Gotta get through this ad, though. Oh, two ads. Come on, ads. Oh, no, there's more. All right. Before we get into this one, I want to say, I think the last one we just watched is my new favorite. Um, just fun happy it, I could really see that being uh, like an anime ending or opening really I could just see that on like a slice life anime um, it sounded like straight out of like a shoujo like car captor sakura or something um, really really loved it love the style love the just like positive happy teamwork friendship kind of I've got some like sisterhood vibes in there there was a little reference to the moon and we know that the moon is broken so we saw it was like all shattered so um but that's not going to be a problem because they can light up each other's worlds um just kind of a cute happy fun one um I just I think that's my favorite so far I don't know it's such a it's such a weird um two favorites to have the like I'm gonna kick your butt song and the uh Yay! I'm gonna love you forever song! <laughs> My two moods! No, I'm kidding. Alright, let's listen to more because I'm really enjoying this. Mm. Oh. A little grim! Oh God! I'm not liking where this is going. Okay. Going back to that hope is gone. Oh. Ah. Got it. Determined. Mm. A little bit more of a grim tone, though. Oh, she was fighting wolves in the trailer. I'm not looking forward to that day. I'm, I'm getting worried for what's gonna happen. A lot of like friends leaving friends behind here. <gasps> when the moon is gone. The moon's important, isn't it? The moon plays a very important role in this, doesn't it? Oh, 
Oh my. I think I'm I think I might be starting to put some things together. Beautiful artwork by the way. My lord. Well, okay, so we're kind of going back to the opening theme and some of those themes about like hope and peace being gone forever and this terrible day that will come where like everything will end. And it's making me kind of scared for maybe where things are going. Also the reference to the moon. We know the moon is broken, so when the... Oh... I, I think there's some stuff coming. A decision made in a moment, huh? Oh, now we're turning it around! Oh, we're turning it around now, guys. You thought this was gonna be a sad song? No. Yep. Oh, I love it. I love it. That was getting me worried there for a second. That's great. The video is really well done as well. Ooh. Oh, I love that. Ninjas of Love is the book she's reading. <laughs> Have we seen her with that book yet? Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. Before we move on to the next one, I just want to say, okay, I really, really enjoyed that song. So it had me worried at first because it was talking about like this terrible time that will come when all hope is gone and our f we're betraying our friends now and everything is going to crap and I'm like oh no what's gonna happen I do have to say a few of these songs have mentioned the moon and we know the moon is broken is something gonna happen to the moon where like the pieces finally all like crumble away and some kind of like horrible Armageddon is going to begin because the moon is no longer there is some of us ha is is like are pieces moving on the show because of the moon or am I reading too much into it I might be reading too much into it but I think it would be very cool if it was all linked to the moon somehow. Um, but then they turned it around and it's like that in just a moment you can make a decision that changes everything. And I love that. And no, now we're going to stand with our friends. We're going to take back our lives. We're going to win this fight. Um, very, very encouraging. But I was getting worried there for a second. I was like, whoa, I don't know where we're going with this. I think we got some stuff. I think we've definitely got some stuff coming on the show. I felt it for a while that like we got some stuff. So alright guys, now let's jump into the next one. I couldn't take it, couldn't stand another minute. I couldn't bear another day without you win it. All of the joy that I had known for all my life was stripped away from me the minute that you died. What? was all I ever wanted. But now without you I'm a soul forever haunted. Can't help but feel that I had taken you for granted. No way in hell that I could never comprehend this. I wasn't dreaming when they told Who died? Oh no. Uh oh. Guys, I don't remember anyone dying. Either they're talking about somebody's backstory or like someone's gonna die. I'm not going to tolerate somebody dying, guys. Not going to tolerate it. And the writing's red. <sighs> Which tells me Ruby's going to lose someone. Or has lost someone, maybe. Oh, no, guys. White text. 
Oh no. Uh oh! That writing's white, does that mean it's twice her point of view? This song's making me nervous that someone's gonna die. It really is. Okay. Oh God. Petals scatter like, like somebody died. Oh! Okay. I'm concerned, guys. I'm genuinely concerned. Because this sounds like somebody died and Ruby was never the same and Weiss had something to do with it and is also feeling upset. Oh, this... I'm... Mm, I really hope I'm reading too much into this. This sounds like somebody is going to die and I'm not going to... I won't tolerate it. I will not abide it. Oh, good song no oh. who could they be talking about who's lost someone who's that upset about it maybe they're talking about somebody else oh hang on hang on hang on okay before we jump into that one I have to say I'm legitimately nervous because I'm pretty sure that was a song being sung from Ruby's perspective, perhaps also Weiss's perspective about somebody dying. And like the only one I could think of who would like, you know, someone sweet and so kind of full of life and joy like Ruby to just take her world and just trash it like that. The only one I can think of would be Yang. And she even said like, I, I, you left me like I always feared you would. And we know that, She's had like this thing about being having to be close to Yang and having to always like be on her teams and like not really wanting to get too close to anyone else except Yang and have her with her there. Although that's changed a little bit because she's really grown into the teamwork um, atmosphere. But that has me legitimately worried, guys. Am I reading too much into it? I hope I'm just reading too much into it. But I don't know. I do not know. That one's got me. It was great song. Um, I love how each song really has its own kind of uh, tone, you know, whether it's like determined, butt kicking, or like love, or sadness, or despair. Um, and I believe it's like the same vocalist for a lot of these. And... Um, she just does an excellent job at conveying all of that. So I don't know if this is the last one or not, but let's jump in. This one's about Blake, I'm assuming. Okay. Yay. I've heard this on the show. It's not a long time Such a beautiful voice When you're waiting For a small sign Hmm Wonder where we're going with this Patience 
is hard to find. We know Ruby's had issues with patience, shadows, Blake. Shadows seem to fill your life. Mm. Love this. Oh, is this, this probably is supposed to be about Blake because her song, the trailer song, was saying, like, we'll fly, we'll fly away. Beautiful song. Oh my god, the vocals are just so haunting and melodic. I just absolutely love them. That girl just, oh, she absolutely killed it. Did they say they were looking for her for 12 hours? Am I remembering that correctly in the finale? like a sad tone in this part of the song. Oh, she hides her ears. so hard for her to just like hide who she is and have this past that she can't share with anyone this is this is beautiful the song the message and that just the sounds I really hope that at some point there's real justice for the faunus. I really do. I hope that's something we work on. <laughs> A little dab there at the end. Oh, hang on before we move on. Let me see, was that the end of the playlist? I think that was the end of the playlist, you guys. Oh my goodness. What a soundtrack. I feel like I just learned so much more about all of the characters. Um, it's, I think it's definitely more enjoyable after you um, have the per perspective of having seen the show and everything. I think that hearing it, like had I heard it and then learned about them, I don't think I would have felt the full impact as knowing them and knowing their stories and then, um, reading slash hearing these lyrics with that context and perspective um, because there are things that like I can point out 
oh, I remember this from the trailer, or like we know that the moon is broken, or we know um, that, you know, I can tell that this is calling out this one specific character, um, or I know the struggle to which they're referring now, um, and to just kind of get that little musical insight into their character. Like, I didn't realize just how important the music was. I don't think until, like, really diving into this, because, um, it's not just, uh, um, we're gonna put a song to it that kind of, you know, kind of captures what they're going through, and it kind of has a sound we like. Like, no, this is, this is stuff that was made with these characters' voices, you know, like, in mind, um, which I think is really special and unique. Um, I think my favorite one is still the Happy Fun Cute Disco one, the ending to episode three. Loved it. Um, but a close second was the, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be about Yang, just the like butt kicking song. Um, I loved that, but they were all great. And what a great way to know, like, um, even characters who, like I was saying about Yang, you know, we haven't really, we know her and what, like, I know that she's sassy and everything, but we haven't like, you know, we've kind of followed like a struggle for Ruby and a struggle for, for Blake and for Weiss and everything. But Yang's just kind of out there doing her thing. And even just having a song celebrating that was really fun to kind of get to know her a little bit better. I do feel like I got to know the characters better and I'm a little worried that there were references in there to things that are going to happen that I am not down with. I'm not down with somebody dying, you guys. I'm not down with it. Um, but I just get this feeling like there is something. There, A lot of this was in the lyrics that like um, there's going to be a day when all this stuff happens and it's going to be terrible and I don't know between that and the fact that I don't know Maybe they're just doing a good job of building it up in the series. But I feel like there is something really big coming. I guess I could take these out now. Um, there is something coming that's going to be a little bit darker and more dramatic. Um, but I love what they're building up so far on the show. And guys, I just had an absolute blast listening to these. Um, I kind of gave my thoughts on each one as I went. So... Um, I won't try and like go back and recap every single one now because you've already kind of heard it. Um, but I am so glad that you guys recommended that I do this. I need to get this whole soundtrack on my iTunes. That is that is what I'm doing as soon as the camera is done rolling is um, uh, doing that so that I can just listen to them more. And um, I'm sure as the volumes go on, they're going to be even more poignant as I get to know everyone even better. So um, thank you so much, guys, for recommending this. Once again, your recommendations have um, been huge winners. Uh, so I had a blast listening to this. Thank you so much for joining me. Please be sure to join me next time. I'm going to be starting volume two of Ruby, and I'm so excited about it, guys. We will watch it together. Bye for now, guys.